God for you joining us today. And we thank God that snow doesn't last always. And cold doesn't last always. But we thank God that we are here today to celebrate the goodness of our, our God. And uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's just have a quick word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for how you've kept us through another week, oh God. God, we just want to give you honor, glory, and praise. How you've provided for us and protected us. God, we hear reports of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands dying. And then hear about the violence that's going on in the streets. But God, you've been merciful to us. You spared us, oh God. We're just grateful today. And God, it is our prayer today that you just till the soil of our hearts that we might be receptive to whatever it is you have to say to the church today. Because, God, we want to be more like you. We want to be exactly what you have created us to be. This is our desire. This is our prayer. And, God, I pray a special blessing upon everyone in the house today. And, God, for those that couldn't make it out for whatever reason, God, we pray that they, too, would be blessed. I pray that you'd save, heal, touch, and deliver for your glory. And everyone that watches this later on via YouTube, we pray a special blessing upon them and their household as well. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus for your glory. And your glory alone. Amen. 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 Well, here we are again. Praise the Lord. We're just going to read a couple of scriptures. It's uh, uh, dress down Sunday, uh, the snowy day here in Philadelphia, and uh, we're just still loving on and worshiping the Lord our God. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to Second Peter's, Second Peter, uh, first chapter, beginning at the very first verse. 2 Peter 1, 1. Um, yes, as I was saying, we just have a few scriptures we're going to read to you, and we're going to go home and, and get warm by the fireplace uh, and enjoy the rest of the day in the Lord. Today, if I were to use a, a title or a topic, a subject, uh, it would be to know and to be known of God. To know and to be known of God. Yes. For the last two weeks, we've heard message drumming home, uh, drilling home, drumming home the message of stamping out fear, closing the door of fear, how detrimental fear is, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and what I want to convey today, or have you know, is uh, if you know the right thing, if you're known of God, one of the things you can know is peace. And peace mm -hmm. eliminates fear. Fear and peace cannot coexist at the same time. So this is another uh, a way of hitting that same message of, of eliminating fear or getting fear out of our lives. Because, because uh, the days, the, the, the fearful news out in the world is just going to get huge, bigger and bigger, darker and darker and more scary than ever. Uh, but, but those that know our God, those that know their God will do exploits, it says in the book of Daniel. Second Peter, first chapter, first verse reads, Simon Peter, a servant, of, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So he's addressing all of those that have faith, the measure of faith, in Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. Somebody said you can't uh, increase grace, you can't increase peace, but here he says it be multiplied <coughs> unto you through the knowledge of God. How do we get more grace of God? How do we get more peace of God? By getting the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. And of our Lord Jesus our, our Jesus, our Lord. Wow. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Uh, I, what I did in my Bible, I highlighted, highlighted everywhere in this passage in Peter where it says knowledge. My grace, my peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God. Here it says, we have, uh, uh, according to his divine power, he has given us all things 
that pertain to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him. God has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. You can't live a great life without what God has done for you, but you've got to know what it is. You can't live a godly life until you know you can live a godly life. You see, the Bible tells us that when we come to God, we don't have to sin anymore. I know a lot of preachers teach that, you know, you can't help from sinning. But let's read on. See what else it says here. Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. We're given the promises. Do you know what the promises are? You have to know what the promises are. Yes. Yes. Come on. You have to know God. You have to know. The, how do you do that? By delving into his word. By, by praying. By talking to him. By communicating with him. There's a, a couple of ways to know a person. I, I could say, I could call out some names and say, do you know so-and-so, and, and a lot of you would raise your hand. Do you know uh, Barack Obama? Everyone say, oh yeah, he was a president of the United States. Do you know John F. Kennedy? Yeah, yeah, he's a president of the United States. But do you really know him? You know about him. And, and God is saying that this is not enough to know about him. We have to, but it starts there. It starts with knowing about him. And so we want to delve into knowing about him. And as we get to know about him, we'll get to know him. I'm getting a little ahead. Let us read this. Let me read the rest of this through down to verse 11, and we'll come back. Uh, verse 4 again. Whereby are ye given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might know, might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall ne neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Does that say the same thing in your Bible? It says, if you do these things, you will never fall. You don't have to fall. Now, either what they told you is true or the word of God is true. Uh, I'm going to let you choose. Um, verse 11, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you with, unto you abundantly into everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I meant to put down there the, the New Living Testament uh, translation. I love how it says that if you do these things, there's going to be a great celebration when you enter into heaven. Uh, and it's just amazing. But it's all of this is knowledge. It pertains to knowledge. If you do these things, if you uh, uh, pursue to get to know God, he said, you'll have everything that pertains to life and to godliness. <clears throat> the title is To Know and to Be Known of God. And all I've talked about is knowledge. Knowledge is the result of getting to know or is the noun version of to know. To know is the verb, knowledge is the noun. Knowledge is what we want to obtain. We want to obtain knowledge, we want to know about God. And part of the world's problem is they know about God. Anyone familiar with Wikipedia? It's the uh, encyclopedia uh, on the internet. So. You can go there and you can look somebody up and, and they'll tell you uh, what they know or supposedly is true about the person. But the amazing thing is, 
Wikipedia is put together by people. So if you see something on Wikipedia that's wrong, you can offer a change. You can, you can say, oh, that's not right, and, and change it. And the more you do this, you, become, you get a higher rank in Wikipedia, and they give you more privileges. Some people have, a, you have to have a higher privilege to be able to make those changes. So, so you can uh, find a, a famous person that once you've made so many edits, you can edit you know, people that everybody knows. You can edit famous people, and then you can say what you want about them. I want to tell you, Wikipedia is not the truth. It's just people's opinion. Right. Some of it may be true. And the same with the world thinking they know God. Oh, I know all about God. I know about the religions and the restraints and the restrictions that he wants to put in. Why do you want to put yourself, subjugate your thing, yourself to those things? They don't know God. They only know about him. You see, in the Old Testament, um, I believe it's in Genesis chapter 4, right at the first verse, I think it says, and Adam knew his wife. Well, I hope he knew her before then. Uh, but what he's saying is he intimately knew her. And in that intimate relationship, a deposit is made into the other's life, one another's life. When God knows us intimately, he makes a deposit into our life. We've become impregnated with God. We've become impregnated with everything he has for us. We become impregnated with his divine nature, is what he says in, in, in Peter. And he said, unless we get to that intimate relationship with God, we won't have this knowledge of God knowing us intimately. We will not have, uh, we won't be aware of what he has deposited in us until we have this relationship. Uh. I wish I could get it out of me like I have it in me. Intimacy establishes relationship. It fortifies relationship. So when you're intimate with someone, it fortifies your relationship. It makes a soul tie. And sometimes we have had intimate relationship with the world and the things of the world, and it puts something in us that causes us to be forever hindered until we break that soul tie. And when we want to have an intimate relationship with someone new, we have to break away from the old. So when we come to God, we have to break away from that intimate, re the intimate relationships we've had in the past mm -hmm. and say, God, for you I live. Yeah. For you I die. Amen. And then when we develop that relationship with God, the deeper the relationship goes, the higher the level of authority goes. Yeah. You see, the reason why uh, I can't jump out in the middle street and hold up my hand and say, y'all stop, is because I don't have the relationship with City Hall that the police officer does. So when the police officer jumps out in the middle of the street and says, stop, those cars better stop because they recognize the authority on that individual. So when we have an intimate relationship with God, and that relationship allows us to have authority, then the enemy will recognize us and be subjugated to us. Yeah. But it all comes from intimacy. We have to know God and be known of him. I, I, I know I've talked many times about uh, the parable that Jesus talks about. He said, you know, in the last days, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, did I not do X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. I mean, and they were great things. It wasn't, Lord, did I sweep out the church? It was like, didn't I cast out devils? Did I do these? And Jesus even said, and you did all these marvelous works. Jesus said in that same parable, you did these marvelous things. He said, but I never knew you. I did not have an intimate relationship with you. You did it not under my authority. But God says, I want you to know me intimately. I want you not just to read the word because it said the letter killeth, but the spirit of God maketh alive. That's that deposit God wants to make in you. When you have an intimate relationship with him, he will deposit his spirit within you and it will make the word of God come alive. Yes, yes. And then to your faith, the word of God says, we can add virtue. 
Now that we're, we have the faith of God in us, we become virtuous. We can become integral, people of integrity. We won't tolerate uh, injustice or, or cheating or lying or stealing in our lives. We'll become a virtuous people. I, I, I know it would be better if, you know, I see sister so-and-so drop that $50 bill and I just walk up and put my foot over it until she's gone. I know I'll be better if I have 50 extra dollars in my, in my pocket. But that's not a virtuous person. No. Can a saved person do that? Yeah, saved people do that. But he says, if these things be in you, if the, the, the faith is in you and the virtue is in you, and the knowledge of God is in you, if these things be in you and abound, you will never fall. You, some people can't, Christians can't figure out, why is it I keep falling for the devil? Same old trick. The devil tricks you up the same way for the last 10 years, the last 50 years. Yes. Why? Because I haven't added to my faith virtue. Yes. People haven't gotten to become virtuous. Yes, people of God, you've got to be virtuous. Add to your virtue knowledge. Get into the word of God. Some people are saved and the only word of God they hear is what they hear when they come to church. Thank God it doesn't snow every Sunday. Because then they would never hear the word of God. <laughs> Some people only pray when they come to the house of the Lord. But God, when you have a relationship it won't matter. If you have a relationship with someone on your job, it won't matter that a weekend's coming. You'll still have contact with them. You'll get them on the phone or say, hey, can we go out for lunch? Because you have a relationship. When you have a relationship with God, it should go beyond the walls of this church. It should be beyond the walls of when the saints gather together. You should have a private, intimate time with God. In these times, I said, you know, the world is going to get worse and worse and crazier and crazier. And just for a second, I want to talk about pressure. You see, the world is applying pressure. They're telling you all of this knowledge, the knowledge of the world, puts pressure on you. The knowledge of the world will produce carnal fruit. The knowledge of the world, the, not, the, the world, we turn on the TV, it says you got to do this, you got to do that. Uh, famine is coming, uh, uh, shortages are coming, and uh, uh, all, this, all these things. You, you, you got to, you know, hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> Those of you that watch YouTube, I understand. Um, just fear, just constant barrage, a constant shower of fear. And, and those who are in control like people to be in fear because a fearful people will listen to anyone who sounds like they're giving good advice. Yeah, you got to do this. Okay, I got to do this. You got to have your kids in this school. You got to you got to pay this. You got to be there. You got to buy this kind of whatever. So fear is control, but you should have an internal pressure. And that's the knowledge of God. You see, the external pressure is the knowledge of man. It produces external or carnal fruit. But the internal pressure produces divine fruit. The internal pressure is what God is saying. And you see, if, if the internal pressure is less than the external pressure, the external pressure will crush you. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what what kind of science classes you have, but we did all kinds of experiments. You know, we could take a balloon full of air, and then we put it in a, a tank of water, and as it got lower and lower, deeper and deeper in the water, the balloon would seem to get smaller because the pressure from the outside would press down on it and shrink it down, and that's what the world is doing to the Christians. There, there's so much pressure that the churches are closing down. You say, okay, well, we're going to do what you say. You, we're, we're, we're hearing your knowledge. 
But for those other ones who are hearing the voice of God, the knowledge of I know my Redeemer lives. I know he will sustain me. I know he promised to give me life and that more abundantly. I know he promised that if I dwell under the shadow of the wing, he said 10,000 will fall at my side, and a, a, a thousand shall fall at my side, and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh, nigh thee. I know that I can walk in divine health because that's the children's bread, and I'm a child of God. I know. That not one thing can happen to me if I'm in the center of God's will. And so when that pressure is greater than the external pressure, you won't shrink down to, from the pressure of the world, but you will expand. You will push back. And that's how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live a life with the pressure, internal pressure greater than the external pressure yes. so that we'll be the pusher back. We'll be the influencers yes. in society. Yes. And society won't be the influencers of us. It's one thing to say, greater is he that lives on the inside of me than he that lives in the world, right? Mm -hmm. It's another thing to actually act it out. Amen. That's true. Are you hiding in your home because of fear? Are, are, is fear making decisions for you in your life? Right. Mm. Are you trusting in God? Yeah. Which pressure is greater? The greater pressure is going to be the pr pressure you yield to. I've heard Christians say, I know God can, but, see the but changes everything you say before the but. It changes everything, it cancels that all out. But, I'm still sick. What's that got to do with anything? God says he's a healer. Well, I still feel sick. And, and so we cancel out. See, I, I, I've given this sermon before. I said the word of God is like Superman. You know, Superman, he's uh, uh, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. He's faster than, more powerful than a locomotive, yes, right? Yes. Faster than a speeding bullet. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the Superman. You know, you see that, you watch the, the shows, Superman cartoons, uh, or, or the, the, the live show, movies, whatever, Man of Steel, bullets bouncing off his chest, and he could melt through steel with his laser vision. He could freeze things with his, his breath. He was amazing. And the most amazing one of all was that one time, you know, he's always saving Lois Lane, and one time Lois Lane got shot. He didn't get there in time. Superman, you know what Superman did? He went up into the atmosphere and he flew backwards around the opposite direction of the rotation of the earth so that the earth would spin backwards so he could turn back time so that he could get there in time to save Lois Lane and he did. He just flew around the world backwards, the earth backed up a little bit and then he went down and saved Lois Lane. That's amazing, that's why he's Superman. <laughs> but there's this little green rock called kryptonite. When Superman was in the presence of kryptonite, he became an ordinary man. But if he was in the presence of kryptonite long enough, he just collapsed to the floor like a bowl of jelly. He was useless in the presence of kryptonite. Now God says, he says, his word is the most powerful thing in the whole universe. The worlds were framed by his word. I often say, when did the beginning begin? The beginning began when God said, let there be. And when he said that, the beginning began. Everything was framed by the word of God. But the word of God says, your word, because I've given you authority, because I've created you in my image, he said, your word has made my word of none effect. My word is activated by faith. What's Ephesians 3, 27? All right, yeah, man. I heard a whole chorus of now and him that's able to do exceeding. He's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we could ask. And some of you are asking for some big stuff, but there's some things that are just so crazy. Yeah, I want to have a nice big house. I want to have, I want to be a millionaire. But there's other things back there that's just so crazy, you don't even ask for I want to be a multi-billionaire. I want to own Mexico. Yeah, I mean, there's just crazy stuff you don't even pray for. He said, I'm able to do above what you could ask 
or even think, those things that you imagine, those things that are just too crazy to ask God for. Uh, some of you just you know, ask God, God, if I could just pay this month's mortgage, if I could just pay this month's rent. But God said, I, how about if I just pay off the house for you? We don't even pray for that because that's just too big. But God says, it's according to the power that worketh on the inside of you. Are you succumbing to the external pressure, or is the pressure on the inside of you blowing you up? Yeah, yeah, that's the word that the, the kids use now. That, wow, he just blew up. Yesterday, nobody, and all of a sudden, he's somebody. He's selling you know, album after album. He, all of a sudden, he's in everybody's movie. He's all over the place. He blew up. God says, I want you to blow up. The word yeah. in Daniel, I believe it's chapter 7, he said, those that knew their God, their God. and counted not their lives dear unto them. He said, it doesn't matter what the world says. If you do that, it, it, you'll get killed, man. If you, don't, if you do that, you'll wind up broke, busted, and disgusted. It doesn't matter what they said. They said they counted their lives with no, no uh, respect or what's the word, terminology is. But he said, but they, they are the ones that did exploits. They literally got so much pressure of the word of God and got so excited about God in the midst of, in the face of death and turmoil and threat, uh, they, they just blew up. I don't know about you, but I want to get out there and blow up for God. I don't care if anyone knows my name or not, but I want to make him known. I want to make him known. I want to make him famous. I want the truth to be told about God. I not only want to know God, but I want him to know me. I want to have an intimate relationship with him. Isaiah 33, 6 says, and wisdom and knowledge, 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 shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the times, thy times. You know, the Bible says men's hearts are failing them for fear. I believe so many of these COVID deaths were so unnecessary, their hearts failed them for fear. They were terrified. They were constantly bombarded. Oh, this is going to be the worst, the worst thing since the Black Plague. Oh. Hundreds are going to die. I remember when the first, start, first few people started getting sick. They said, this could kill 2 million people in the United States alone in the first year. And everybody was panicking. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. How long can I hold my breath? God says, breathe. breathe, I'll protect you. Yes, yes. God says, I'm with you. Am I not greater? Am I not greater? That's what Moses had to tell the, the, the children of Israel. And, and I, I, I went through this in, in detail some time ago, but I'll just do it quickly and I'm going to wrap up. You all know there are ten plagues on the Egyptians. And it talks about the first three plagues coming to pass. And it didn't say that those three plagues discriminated. In other words, it seemed as though it affected everybody. The water turned to blood, I believe, was the first one. And it affected everybody, the first three plagues. But then the fourth plague came, and Moses, he assured the people, he said, it will not affect you. So from here on, the plagues won't affect you, only the Egyptians. So it does, it's not clear. Some people say, doesn't, don't believe that the first three plagues affected the children of, of, of Israel or, or the, those who were in the land of Goshen. But from that point on, it did not. The Bible clearly says, I forget what it is, frogs or flies or something. Ants, gnats and ants. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, gnats. Yeah, I'll throw that out. <laughs> um, and, and so the, the fourth plague, from that point on, the children of Israel, who lived in the land of Goshen, which was in Egypt, were not affected by the plagues. And I really feel like that this first plague, if you were, COVID that came out, a lot of everybody seemed to be affected indiscriminately. But I believe those that know their God, when the next round comes, we're going to see Christians standing up and be disproportionately healthier than those that don't know their God. Now, I'm not condemning masks. I'm not condemning vaccines. I'm not condemning any of that. Use wisdom. Yes. 
Wash your hands. Should be doing that anyway. But I'm telling you, don't fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what some virus can do to you. God is greater and he promises to protect his people. And as we see the world get crazier and crazier, we're going to know God better and we're going to walk in this divine uh, uh, bubble. It's going to be so awesome and so amazing. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank I know God, and, and we're going to just... We're just going to be so in love with this relationship. I don't know if you, any of you had, had uh, fallen head over heels for someone before, but it didn't matter if your favorite show didn't come on TV that week. It didn't matter if you're on the phone talking to them. It didn't matter what else was going on. It didn't matter that you needed to be someplace else or do something else because you're on the phone with the one you love. And that's how it's going to be in this world. It doesn't matter what they do over in Ukraine and Russia. I know God. I can still laugh. I can still smile. Yes, yes. I can still enjoy the Lord. I don't have to hide out in the corner of my bedroom. Yes, I don't have to get black shades over my window. I don't have to get locked and loaded. I don't have to carry peace because I have peace in my heart. Yes. My feet are shod with the preparation of peace. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Why? Because I know God. Yes. I know God. And he said, because if we put these things in us, we'll be, never be fruitless or, or barren, un, yes. uh, barren, unfruitful or barren. We'll always be fruitful if these things listed in Peter are in us. Yes. And it says, if they abound, we shall never fall. You don't yes. have to fall. Yes, yes, thank you. God promises. Yes, thank you. You see, I tell you again and again, Satan has a plan for your life. It's to kill you, to steal from you, and to destroy you. But God said, I have a plan to give yeah. you life. And a whole lot of Christians stop there. But he said, I come to give you life more yeah. abundantly. Yes. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes. You see, forgiveness is the reinstitution of relationship. You might have messed up. You might have done wrong. You might have failed. Yeah. But when we ask God to forgive us, he reinstitutes relationship. And he makes, it, makes us justified. Someone said justified is just if I never sinned. God says I'll erase your past. And then relationship is the uh, righteousness is the byproduct of a relationship with God. Again, if we have a relationship with God, we'll become righteous. I have this other scripture passage here. Uh, I'll just read it and we'll close. Philippians 3, 8 through 14. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do not count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. Apostle Paul was saying it's so important to get the knowledge of Christ. I'll, I'll throw everything away. I just want to know him because I know when I know him. I will abound. I will have abundant life. I know that's the best and the greatest thing I could do. He said, I'll suffer all things. Uh, I've given away all these things. I counted everything, my education. I counted all his dung that I might win Christ. Verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is the, of the law, but that which is through faith, the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I might know him. See, the Apostle Paul said in another place, he said, you know, I'm forgetting about those things which are behind me. Yes, yes. But I'm pressing forward toward the mark of the prize. Yes. I'm forgetting about the good, bad, and the ugly. I've had some ugly experiences in the yes. past. But you know what? I had some good things yes. happen to me. I had some successes. And you know what? Sometimes the successes are worse for you than the, the bad things. Sometimes the bad things will propel you to do better. But when you get successful, you say, I'll just camp out right here. But God wants us to perpetually go, perpetually to press on. God said, I've got new. I've got better. I don't care what you got. Yes. God, God said, I've got better for you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I believe it's somewhere in the Old Testament. It just came yes. to me. He said, he said, for those of you that have, have steel, he said, you know what? I'm going to give you brass. And for those of you that have brass, I'm going to give you silver. And for those of you that have silver, I'm going to give you gold. In other words, what he's saying is, I don't care what you've got. I've got something better for you. I've got something better than what you have. And God said, I want you to always continuously strive 
for that better thing. Yes. Uh, verse 10 again, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I've already attained neither either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. See, I jumped ahead of myself. Uh, and reaching forward to those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Yes. God, I want to be known. I, I want to know you, and I want to be known of you, yes. that I might know him. That was Apostle Paul's number one desire. I don't, I don't care what's going on in the world. I just want to know God, and I want to do what pleases him, and I know nothing pleases him better than winning another soul, getting another soul one to him. That's what pleases God, and when I please God, he reveals more of himself to me. You see, when we have a relationship with God, he'll give us authority, a all authority of the enemy. But not just authority, he'll give us power with that authority. When you've got power and authority, you cannot be stopped. But it all depends on, are you, do you not only know God, but does he know you? Are you allowing him, him to know you? Are you allowing him to make a deposit in your life? Are you allowing that uh, the spirit to unwrap the, the gifts? See, Peter was saying how everything is already there. But until God knows you, until you let the revelation of God come in you and unwrap those gifts, you'll be just as if you were Superman with kryptonite in the room. But God says, I want to display my power and my glory through you. But the only way that's going to happen is if you deepen your relationship. Now is the time. Now is the time to deepen our relationship with God. We have just finished last week our 21 days of communion with God where we're going to spend one uninterrupted hour with God. And I just want to challenge you to make that your life story. That God help me today to spend some quality time with you. You know, it's amazing to me that some Christians see prayer as kind of punishment, something I have to do, a drudgery. But if you read Jesus, if you read through the Gospels, and I encourage you whenever and if ever possible to sit down and read one of the Gospels all the way through, any one of them, John, Luke, Matthew, Mark, read them all the way through in one city, each of them. And you'll begin to notice some things about Jesus. And one of the things was, after Jesus was done ministry, he ran to prayer. Prayer was his reward. He said, now that I've done, what's it said? He that cometh to God must believe that he is. Yeah, that's not what I was looking for, but that's good. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a reward of them that diligently seek it. He said, but after you've done the will of the God, then you shall receive the promise. So Jesus went out and he did the will of God. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he cast out demons, he preached the gospel. Then he ran to receive the promise. He ran back to Father God, God, I've done what you told me to do. And I just believe that God just came down on him and loved on him and he just had a, had a glorious time. He was revived, renewed, refreshed, overjoyed. He was put deposits in him that enable him to make it through the next week. To make it through all that he had to face the, in, in the upcoming times. When we do the will of God, I, I, I know some preachers who, who after uh, you know, Sunday morning, uh, they, 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 they release everything that God has given them. And then you know, they, they, they goof off literally the next 36, 48 hours. I'm, I've been guilty of that myself. I know. But Jesus, he ran as when he was done with God, you know, uh, with doing the will of God. He went back to God. And that's what we have to be. We have to run back to God. God, did I do good? Like a little kid. Was that good? Was that good? Was that okay, God? How can I fix it? How can I make it? I just want to please you because I want to know you. I want to understand you. 
uh, the word of God says, God made known his ways unto Moses, but his acts unto the children of Israel. In other words, the children of Israel only knew that was God after he did something. Oh yeah, that, that looked like something God would do. But Moses understood the path that God was going. He said, I'm going to go stand over there because I know he's going to be over there. He knew how God was, so he knew how God thought and he could act in response to where he knew God was going to move. Hmm, there's got to be a better way to say that. <laughs> See, the children of Israel only knew his past words, but when you get intimate with God, so oh, I know he likes to show up over there at this time, so I'm going to be over there. Children of Israel didn't know that. They only knew, oh yeah, he was there. I could see his signs. And that's not how we want to live our lives, knowing where God was. I don't know about you, but I want to be where God is. And if I don't feel God right here, and I know he's going to be over there, I'm going to do what it takes to get over there. Forget those things which are behind me. And I press forward for the mark of the prize of the high calling. One last thing, and I'm done. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Jesus is the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. You see, the problem with religion, religion is good in getting you started to recognize, to go after God. But after it gets you connected with God, religion is, is not good. And so we're, we don't consider ourselves to be in a religion, religion. We consider ourselves to be in a relationship. Because Jesus Christ is the truth. And religion adds stuff to the truth. Okay, Jesus is the truth. Okay, and now all you women have to do this and that and the other thing. And all you men can do this. And all you children, you're, you're, you have, you're subjugated to this. And you seniors are subjugated to that. And put everyone in boxes. And they, they, they build fences for everyone to sit in. And the Holy Ghost will only come if you do this. And so truth plus addition becomes tradition. That's religion. We don't want tradition. We want to take the tradition and cut off the addition and just worship God in spirit yes. and truth. Yes. Just like Jesus told the woman at the well. God, we want to worship you in spirit and truth. Praise the Lord. The Lord says, we said in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And whatever you need shall be added unto you. If you don't know God as your personal Savior, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can know him today. If you've fallen away, Sin separates, but repentance restores. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If that's you today, why don't you just take a moment and get it right with the Lord? There's no magic prayer. You know, I, I can tell you to repeat a prayer for me, but if you don't mean it from your heart, it didn't mean anything. There's no magic prayer. Magic words to say, it's the sincerity of the heart. You say something to this effect, Father God, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. Save me, and I'll live for you. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. It's just that simple, and that's the beginning. Then I encourage you to turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. Read that. Add to your faith virtue. Add to your, your, your faith all of these things. And they will stabilize you and keep you from falling. Jude chapter 20, chapter 1, verse 24 says, Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless with exceeding joy. You see, the world is lying to you. It's not a life of bondage, but it's a life of liberty. It's a life of freedom, and we can do it with exceeding joy. Amen. God bless you. Lord, I just thank you for the word that has gone forth. I thank you, oh God, despite my fumbling and bumbling and my delivery, 
God, I thank you that your word is powerful and it will accomplish that that you set it out to do. God, we just want to know you better. God, we want to be known of you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that the seed that has been planted today will spring forth and we will be better for children of God because of what occurs here today. We just ask these things in the name of Jesus for your glory. Amen. This is the hour of deliverance, and deliverance is taking the land. Shalom until next time.